Okay, so it's time to fit the clutch actuating mechanism. That's the mechanism that actually pulls the pull rod and therefore releases the clutch. And that's a fairly basic kind of uh, system, I'm afraid. Um, and it's based on three ball bearings and then this uh, strange cutaway in that face and uh, and this face. And basically what happens is the ball bearings sit in these uh, holes, these uh, grooves, and then when the lever, when you pull the clutch lever, it rotates this, and the ball bearings go up the ramp, and going up the ramp, it pushes the uh, ramp apart. It pushes these two plates apart, you know, as the ball bearings turn and that pulls this out pulling the push rod pull rod with it the problem real problem is there's not much lift you don't get much lift you know it'd be great if it like woo pulled it out to there then you get great clutch disengagement when it pulls it out you know to about there a couple of you know only about 20 thou or so um but that's the basic uh, principle behind it okay so what we do is uh we first of all we need to mount the ball bearing so what we do is we actually stick the ball bearings in this back plate with some grease, hoping that they are going to sit there whilst we do the whilst we mount the front plate uh, without falling out. Okay, so we lobbed a bit of grease in there, and then we're just going to glue the ball bearings in with the grease into the big into the grooves. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Not sure about that one. Oh, God, blimey, that one nearly went on the garage floor. I wouldn't have found that for half an hour, if at all. Okay. So we kind of glued those in now. Uh, and then we have the actual uh, sort of ramp itself. And this goes over the top. Now, normally, you would fit the clutch cable first and put it... Uh, Put it in this cleat here but we haven't got the clutch cable so i need to fit this uh uh you know before the clutch cable so um that should be okay the problem is that when we come to fit the clutch cable it can be very difficult to get it in this cleat so we might have to take take this back off to fit the clutch cable and then put it back on again because normally you fit the clutch cable first things to note is there should be oil in here people take this cover off and go oh, there's oil in there should there be on it yes there should for a start, um, one thing to note is the clutch cable actually goes into the primary chain case and then back out through here. So there is actually a hole here. So oil will come through this uh, the, the hole where the cable is because this cable actually goes into inside the chain case and then back out again. And then, as you can probably see, there is a drain hole here. And of course, there's a hole there that we, that's the one that we use for checking that the, um, foot is in the right place uh, the gear change foot that's the one you see where the foot is exactly halfway across the hole well that's for checking but also it means that oil can come in there because there needs to be oil in there to lubricate all, all this system so yes there should be oil in there mm. Mm. I mean I'm, I am bother checking this bearing but uh, I need to get some oil on this bearing this bearing uh, isn't great I didn't really check it before because you know normally they're fine. I'll just see if I put in a bit of oil on it will ease its pain a bit. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're okay now. It's all nice and free. Just needed a bit of oil on it. Okay. So that's in position. Uh, put this in position, which uh, is with this edge down on the stop there. Hopefully the bearings are still in their little places where we put them. And then I hold that in whilst I put the main nut on the pull rod and I hope that the pull rod's not going to turn when I do the nut up, oh, good, it's staying still. Because I need three hands, I need another hand to try and stop the pull rod turning, but luckily it's not on, it's starting to turn now. 
I'll see if I can just hold it with one finger. Go on. Just a little burr probably on the end there. There we go. No, still got it, still bloody turning. Damn. Right, I'll have to see if I can hold this and so what I'll do is I'll unscrew the pull rod which has the same effect as screwing a nut in. Is that? I'm not sure that that is. I'm not sure that that is correct. I don't think that the nuts are seated. I'm not sure. The uh, ball bearings. I'm not sure the ball bearings are seated back there. No, I think they're okay. Yeah. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to do this nut up. So it's quite tight. So it's tight up against the mechanism. Then I've got the lock nut, which goes on the end of the uh, pull rod again. And then I need to adjust it. Now, in the manual, it says there should be five thousandths of an inch play between this nut and the actuating mechanism now that's far too much because if you have that then when you pull the clutch on nothing much is going to happen because the first five thou of that of play is going to be taken up by by the that gap and as you haven't got much to play with in the first place nothing it's not really not a great idea so people say well actually you could maybe use just two thou okay now what i use but don't tell anybody is i just slacken the nut off that it's slack. Okay, so I know it's not pulling on the, I know there's not putting, you know that little sort of thrust bearing that's that's behind here. I just, I just do that nut so it's just slack. And then you've got, you're not pulling on the bearing but you've got maximum efficiency from the clutch lever because there's no no massive slack to take up there. Yeah. Um, slightly controversial, maybe because uh, you know. But but that's it. You don't want to over. You don't want to over tighten this because you'll knacker that bearing inside. You don't want it too slack because then the clutch won't work. So I do it so just so that nut isn't tight on the on the back plate. Right, and now I need to get. The uh, adjustable spanner that I've forgotten to get. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to hold, use it to hold the nut in the right position. And then tighten up the lock nut. The problem with it is now I need to try and tighten the lock nut without the pull rod moving, but it's difficult. You need three hands one to hold the nut, one to tighten the lock nut and one to hold the pull rod. So it's virtually impossible. So all I can do is, if I get the a way I can, maybe I can jam that on, I don't know. It's, it's just impossible. See. That's okay. I mean, the main thing is that when I've done that nut up, that there is some play, that that nut isn't too tight against against here. And then you can see it spins. Yeah, so it's not too tight, but I've still got maximum. Uh, uh, sort of um, the uh, maximum lift on, on this. Now, as I say, the thing is that we might have to take it off because trying to get the cable in uh, there into this cleat uh, while I'm in position is pretty impossible so I probably have to take it all off to put the cable in and then put it back on again but that's what I do A is just to have that nut loose and B when everything's adjusted all tight this uh, 
the, sort of the cleat there should be hard to be down here on against the stop so that means you've got maximum lift available on this which isn't much if this is about up there when you start in fact when you tighten everything and it's already up there then forget it because you've only got you know a few thou of lift available so you really want all your clutch cable and that tight on the lever whilst that's down there you know if you pull the lever and a that doesn't start moving then it's too slack or b that 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 uh, is already up there that's no good you want that down there with all the cable tight so that you've got maximum uh, sort of play from all your cable and that but without over adjusting it because if you over adjust it that pulls the whole thing into this casing and where's that bearing that uh, sort of linear uh, needle roller bearing behind here Ra radial I'd say radial bearing um, that's behind there okay all right so that's about done we'll put the cover on um, I have just tightened up uh, down here this is the adjuster for the primary chain just made sure that's nice and I've put the the inspection cap on with a new uh, rubber o-ring on the back uh, that's about it and then another sort of for your information this bit here is another boss here that's redundant I think though that's the boss from the very very early models that used to have a different type of tensioner uh, primary chain tensioner and it used to be there used to be a that's a boss to take a shaft that used to hold the tensioner uh, but you know that was made back in 68 but of course in the manner of uh, sort of triumph etc they never bothered to change it so it's just left there uh, it's been you know when they made the engines in 75 they still used the same basic casing such was the motorcycle industry at the time okay so I'm just going to put that outer casing on uh, and then we're done right right I nearly forgot um, then when this is on <clears throat> there's these two like little sprung arms that are, they, they bolted into here and these two sprung arms go and hold this uh, sort of mechanism in place now someone was telling me the other day that you can just do away with those spring arms because of course the whole thing is held in place with this nut and the spring arms simply serve to make the whole thing even heavier than it already is now I can see that there's logic in that and I don't think you necessarily need those arms and in our case the bike came to me without the arms they're, they're, all that's missing someone has already taken them off so I'm going to try uh, you know leaving it as is and, and not putting the arms in normally those spring arms are there I've not used it oh dear someone at the door I've not used it uh, like that but um, we're going to we're going to try it this way okay I'll have to go ah having answered the door right so, so all we need to do now is to put this cover on just got a bit of oil on it don't worry okay um and I put this cover on, cover on without uh, without well seal. What? Without well seal? Unbelievable. Yes, because um, there is some oil in there, but not much. And also, that means you can, uh, in our case, we can get to it to to do the clutch cable and so on. Um, so if we needed to well seal it later, we we can. Number one, number two. There's the Allen screws, and there's four slight longer Allen screws and one slightly shorter one uh, and the slightly shorter one goes in there because as you can see you know that's uh, that's thinner you know that's lower so uh, shorter one in there and then the four slightly longer ones in the other holes mm -hmm. and there we are primary chain case on uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, as I've done with others, I'm going to cut down. What I do is a bit OCD, obviously. Uh, I've cut down with a Stanley knife the protruding gasket and then wipe off any well seal. There's a bit there that I've got to take off yet. Uh, and uh, so it just makes for, for a nice finish. But uh, there we go, primary chain case uh, now all done. And uh, engine beginning to look like uh, a bit of an engine. 
Uh, yeah, in fact, of course, what I'm, I said it's all done, but I uh, just need to put the gear lever on uh, and tighten it up. I say and tighten it up because um, I've had two gear levers fall off where I forgot to actually tighten the lock nut up because I thought I'll just put them on, I'm not sure they're in the right position on the spline, so I didn't tighten them up and of course then forgot all about it and they fell off. <clears throat> so I should put that the gear lever on and tighten up the, uh, the locking bolt. Um, there we are, all done, 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 with gear lever in situ as well. So now all we've got left is the starter motor and the carbs. So next up will be the starter motor.